We are joined this morning by Exelixis' CEO, Mike Morrissey. Mike, thanks very much for being here with us. Great to be here. Thank you. Uh, pleasure having you. Uh, two names that if you're interested in Exelixis, you might want to become familiar with if you're an investor. Cabozatinib and Covimetinib. Can you tell us, that, that's a, quite a mouthful. I might just refer to them as Cabo and Kobe going forward. <laughs> as, as do we. So right, that's right, awesome. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Tell us about these two compounds, what they do, and how you commercialize them. Yeah, right absolutely. Now. Well, first of, all, first of all, thanks again for coming out to see us today. Really excited to be talking to you guys and be able to tell you more about Exelexis and our two lead compounds that are now drugs. Uh, Cabo Zantinib uh, is, uh, is a drug that we've, both drugs we discovered ourselves and did uh, development on. Cabo, compound that we've taken all the way through to... Uh, to the pivotal trials and now commercializing in two different forms. Uh, Kobe Metinib uh, is a compound that we partnered with Genentech Roche after, after phase one, and they're, mo and they're doing the development work themselves on that. Um, so in-house compounds that we've been able to discover, design, further optimize, and then develop uh, in, in terms of doing clinical work. So very exciting for us. Uh, we have currently those two uh, brand uh, brands are in, in, in three different configurations, now currently marketed. Uh, Cabo Zantinib uh, is, in, is in two different forms. The, the capsule form is called Cometric. Uh, that was approved at the end of 2012 for medullary thyroid cancer, a rare form of thyroid cancer. Uh, and uh, and the, the, the tablet formulation uh, is called Cabo Medics. Uh, and that, is, uh, that was approved about a year ago uh, for uh, advanced uh, kidney cancer or renal cell carcinoma. So uh, we've launched that now. Uh, we've had a good, uh, a good 12 months uh, in the marketplace, uh, seeing some pretty, uh, pretty uh, encouraging uh, sales data uh, that we talked about in the past and certainly very pleased with the clinical data and the impact and benefit to patients. Sure, and a, a lot of the things we're seeing now are kind of combination therapies where you're actually using MEK inhibitors uh, in conjunction with other cancer immunotherapy drugs to improve the effic efficacy of this design, right. right? And you're working with several other drug developers to do that. Can you, is this the future for the treatment of cancer? Well, I would say combination therapy in oncology has been kind of the status quo for, for decades, mm -hmm. right? So uh, doing, doing combinations per se by themselves isn't really a new thing. Uh, it's always, you, know, you have single agent activity that you try and improve, and, and you know, historically, the next step has been to combine you know, compound A with compound B to try to maximize benefit without, without increasing toxicities. So what we're doing now with cabozantinib in terms of combinations or cobimetinib in terms of combinations isn't really a new thing per se, but it certainly is very exciting around what's happening now in uh, the uh, immuno-oncology area, coupled with some very uh, important uh, advances in the uh, tyrosine kinase space, for example, with both cabo and Kobe. Can you tell us a little bit of the work that you're doing, um, especially for that, for renal cell carcinoma, second-line treatment? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what we've done uh, in, in, in general is, again, with the with the, uh, Cabo Zantinib effort, again, we had uh, our, our pivotal trial in advanced uh, RCC called the Meteor trial uh, that read out in 2015 uh, with, uh, with Cabo Zantinib. It was the first uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor, TKI, uh, that showed the trifecta of activity in terms of improving overall survival, doubling PFS, strong response rate. Uh, and now we're looking to basically improve that, right? Uh, and the idea was, could you take the best of the TKI space uh, and combine that with an IO-focused, Im immunotherapy-focused drug uh, that would allow us then to hopefully uh, mix and match, conquer, really co combine and conquer the overall approach uh, from the standpoint of taking these two different mechanisms and looking to kind of, and looking to really combine them. So, uh, so as part of our broad development program, uh, we have uh, work going on with the National Cancer Institute. Uh, Andrea Apollo uh, has done initial work uh, that we published and, and, and presented now uh, at both uh, EORTC and ASCA GU in the last year or so, uh, looking at the combination of Cabo uh, with um, with nivolumab or Nevo, uh, as well as the triple combination of Cabo, Nevo, and Ipi or Ipilimumab, uh, showing good tolerability. Good Good early activity uh, in a variety of GU, kind of rare GU uh, tumor types, which we're very excited about, and that's prompted then a, a, a broad collaboration, a broad clinical, co broad clinical collaboration, excuse me, with BMS uh, that will allow us now to look at pivotal trials. Uh, first, in, in uh, first example is in first line. Um, uh, 
first line RCC, where we'll look at the Cabo-Nevo combination and the Cabo-Nevo-Ipi combination uh, in that first line setting. So that should start mid-year or so, so we're certainly very excited about that, but I think it really underscores the importance of looking at, um, looking at combining therapies that have very different mechanisms of action, uh, but that could provide uh, much more benefit to patients because they work orthogonally uh, with, these, with these different compounds. Are you looking at Cabo as a single agent, though, um, not in combination with other therapies, but as a first-line agent for RCC also? Well, as, as you might know, we had uh, phase two data uh, that was uh, both presented and published over the last year or so uh, from our phase two Cabo Sun. Uh, study where we showed for the first time that cabozantinib uh, compared head-to-head -head against sunitinib, which is standard of care first-line agents, showed uh, very encouraging results, positive, uh, positive top-line data in terms of, of, of improving progression-free survival uh, with a hazard ratio of 0.66, so about a 34 percent benefit for cabo over sunitinib, which is very encouraging. We saw a good trend in overall survival that wasn't significant, but certainly gave us a um, you know, strong trend. And then we saw a very good difference in, in the response rate, 46% for cabozantinib and about 18% for sunitinib. So, so good signs of activity. We've talked about that, again, publicly in terms of the actual data, in terms of its presentation and the publication that came out in JCO uh, a few months ago. And our plan, our intent is to file uh, an SNDA on that data uh, sometime in, in the third quarter of this year. Okay. okay, beyond that, um, you know, we're very interested in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a trial we have ongoing in liver cancer. Uh, it's a very important uh, tumor type globally, uh, high unmet medical need, uh, and a, our, our, our trial is called Celestial, uh, where we're looking at second line or uh, patients who previously progressed upon uh, serafinib treatment uh, that then um, had progressed. Uh, and looking at, at comparing cabozantinib versus placebo or best supportive care um, in that trial. So very, again, very exciting. So we're doing both single agent activity uh, and uh, single agent trials, looking at pivotal trials, uh, as well as looking at a wide range of then potential opportunities in terms of combination trials as well. How do you prioritize those projects? If you're looking for renal cell carcinoma, kidney cancers versus something else that would be for a... Uh, for a liver cancer, how do you prioritize which ones the company's focused on? Yeah, so I, we, we go through a very careful analysis uh, in terms of the, the clinical data, the, the kind of mechanistic rationale, the preclinical data, the clinical data, the commercial assessment, the financial assessment. We look broadly at all those different components as we're trying to understand priorities relative to what, what really what the best way is to invest the capital that we have and then to go forward then and then do these trials. Um, obviously, the more, um, the, the more momentum we have with the data, the better we feel about that, obviously. Uh, but certainly, I think having partners like Ibsen now and Takeda, who are helping us globally develop and, and commercialize the drug, uh, helps us then do more in parallel. That was part of the, part of the charm of doing those uh, uh, partnerships back in the 2015, 2016 and 2017 timeframe is that we've got more, more muscle financially now to be able to do more trials in parallel. As we've cleaned up our balance sheet, as we've right-sized our P&L, we can really now focus on building value with cabozantinib ourselves and at the same time uh, relying upon Roche and Genentech then to develop cobimetinib in those trials as well. So we've got two really interesting compounds that we're pursuing broad development programs uh, in, in basically in parallel. One that we're funding ourselves with cabozantinib, the other that we're uh, relying up, really relying upon our partner with, with uh, Roche and Genentech to then fund and then bring to success. And Ipsen is helping you commercialize in the EU and Takeda in Japan. Uh, that's, correct? that's correct, correct. exactly. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Um, for a lot of the combination therapies, you've got, as you mentioned, multiple drug manufacturers working together for the final therapy. How does that influence pricing? I would assume that makes it much more complex, especially when you're commercializing it globally. Does this influence the pricing for other indications in any way? You know, pricing is always a very complex uh, part of the process. Obviously, after you've got a lot, a lot you know, years of investment from the standpoint of the R&D, the development, all the regulatory hurdles, you get to a an approved drug, you want to price the drug you know, really appropriately. And as I look at it, you look at there's three different factors that you want to consider. You want to consider um, really access, right, from the standpoint of making sure that as many patients can get the drug as possible. You want to consider the impact on value. Is your data good enough really to be able to warrant that broad access? 
and then be able to balance those two around your, your ability to innovate in the future. So it's really value, access, and innovation. And how those play together allow you, based upon the data that you've got, the, the, the market dynamics, if you will, in terms of what's happening there, to then price appropriately to maximize really the value, the access, and then your future ability to innovate as you generate revenues and can then reinvest in the business. So, so we look at that very carefully. <clears throat> we've, I think we've done a really good job of being able to balance those three factors. I, I, think, I think the real point, though, is to be able to um, you know, generate um, the right data to maximize patient benefit. And then from there, you can, you can maximize access as well. So, yeah. Speaking of that uh, future innovation, We've noticed that you guys have really strengthened the balance sheet of Exelixis recently. How are you building out the pipeline for, for future drugs, other than the two that we've talked yeah. about with, with Kobe and yeah. Pablo? No, it's, it's the, I think, the fundamental strategic point that we're looking at right now very carefully. Um, if you go back in time into the you know, 2010, 2011 time frame, we focus all of our activities on cabozantinib. It, it was a very important tactical consideration. Um, it wasn't really strategic. We didn't wake up one morning and say, hey, we're going to be the Cabo only company. Let's put all of our, all of our efforts and assets here. Um, it, was really, it was really a tactically important consideration to be able to get to a point where we could become a commercial organization. Uh, then with, with that success, that, that, that potential success, um, re, re, refocus on building a commercial group, generate revenues, generate free cash, and then reinvest that free cash back in the business, right? So, so tactically speaking, we've been working for the last six, seven years to get to the point right now where we're generating, you know, I think really interesting revenue streams uh, with both cabozantinib and cobimetinib, and then to be able to push that back uh, into how we're going to then build a pipeline, which is what we've done in the past uh, in, a, in a very high throughput way uh, back in the 2002 to 2010 timeframe. So we've got those skills. We have that basic core fundamental expertise in the company, and now it's time to now make this whole thing work from the standpoint of using the strength of the balance sheet, uh, the strength of the P&L to now reinvest in the business. So, so we have restarted discovery uh, in the last few months, um, and we're very excited about that. Um, obviously, that's a strong part of our history. Uh, if you go back to the uh, you know two thousands time frame, we uh, we you know, independently discovered and then developed about twenty compounds that made it to the IND level across uh, a variety of different uh, pathways and tumor types. Really, first in class and best in class compounds. So we've got that you know in our core in our DNA to be able to do that well, and we're excited now to be able to go back with a stronger PNL, stronger financial position, and do that again, only maybe a little bit, bit, a little bit differently, a little bit better uh, from the standpoint of how we can operate um, as a fully integrated discovery development commercial organization. Uh, the other is, is to go out and look for other assets, right? So uh, it's a big world. There's lots going on out there. Uh, there's been obviously a very strong um, um, emphasis on the whole I.O. Uh, kind of area, which, is, which makes a lot of sense. But that, that, that focus and that kind of herd mentality has left a lot of other assets on the sidelines uh, that simply aren't getting funded for just lack of interest or maybe more, maybe more importantly, lack of funding. So, uh, so we're, we're looking at those very carefully right now, too, uh, from the standpoint of are there assets can we either partner or acquire uh, that would allow us to then, uh, you know, in a very streamlined, pragmatic fashion, rebuild our product portfolio. So excited about that. We have a lot going on. We hired a new head of BD. Uh, our uh, chief scientific officer and chief medical officer are intimately involved in that process of triaging opportunities, looking at data, doing diligence. So, um, so we have a lot, a lot of work to do there, but we're very excited to be able to have turned that corner from a revenue point of view and from a balance sheet point of view to now be able to focus back on really the hardcore early stage science that we think can build value in the long term. Great, Mike. And then last question for you, our, our audience is individual investors. Anything that you'd like to say that you think that they should know about Exelix, just about what's going on in the biotech landscape or the bigger picture right now? Anything you'd like to pass along as some final words? Yeah, no, it's uh, certainly, certainly love to talk to you guys and appreciate all your support and their support over the years. Look, this is a really hard business. Uh, we've, we've certainly, like most biotech companies, that Biotech companies have, have had our ups and downs over the years. Um, I think what's important for uh, people who are watching us to understand is that we're working every day really hard to be able to help patients 
with new drugs and new ideas and new hypotheses uh, about how we can translate science into medicines and then medicines into, into drugs that can help patients. And if we do that well, the patients benefit, our shareholders benefit, and uh, we're working every day extremely hard to be able to make that a reality. Great. Thanks very much. All for right. Thank you.